Welcome everyone to ADP panel mm -hmm. today, November 15th, 2 p.m. Uh, we're welcoming everyone to the Squamish Nation Traditional Territory. Um, the first uh, to adopt the agenda, but before we do that, we'd like to switch up the business and do the panel refresher with Jonas first, and then the uh, business at 38931 Queensway second. So we'll start with that. Um, motion to adopt the agenda. John, John and seconded Jackie. Uh, minutes of meeting from last time, October 18th. I was not here. Does everyone that was here have any changes or it all looks good? Looks good? Okay. Uh, motion to adopt the agenda. Roslyn, seconded to John. Okay. Business. Let's start with Jonas. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so we do have a, a one new member at least today, uh, and I think most people here, I think we might be missing three. Um, so I'm wondering if we could do a quick round of introductions uh, so that everyone knows who everybody is. Uh, my name is Jonas. I'm the, uh, I represent the planning department, and I'm sort of the assigned staff person on the ADP, so I'm here uh, most of the time. Um, in some cases I can't make it, but that's me. I'm Jenna Bichko, landscape architect, and work in Vancouver at Fidio College. Uh, Mike, I uh, live in Squamish. I have a small design build firm. Um, yeah. Carl Zavarse, I work for Cornerstone Developments. Uh, I'm a planner by background. Tanis Schulte, I'm an architect and local to Squamish. Richard Avalon Savage, I'm the chair. Uh, mm -hmm. I work as a civil consultant in town, and I represent the engineers and geoscientists of BC. Rosalind Doak, uh, representative of the BCSLA, and I'm based on Worcester. John Jervis, I'm a commercial real estate consultant in Squamish. John Knezis, I live in Squamish. I am representing the Public Art Selection Committee on the Business Committee. Uh, I've worked in urban planning in terms of transit planning. I'm Dwayne Seagrist, Integra Architecture Architect. Perfect, thank you. So uh, we do this every year, we try to do this every year, do a little refresher on ADP roles. I think it's critical for the members to understand what the role is uh, of this panel and what some of the limitations are. Um, so uh, just quickly uh, overview the composition. We've got 12 members. Uh, there's three architects now, two landscape architects, uh, one engineer or geoscientist, uh, one expert uh, on accessible design, uh, one developer, three public at large members, and one uh, representative of arts and culture. And that's uh, a recent change to the bylaw uh, that happened, I think, uh, a month ago. So the principal roles of the ADP are uh, really three. One, the main role is to advise on development proposals. That's probably 80% of, uh, of the uh, work that the ADP does. Um, and it is enshrined, that role is enshrined in the Local Government Act. It's enshrined in the ADP bylaw, which um, directs uh, uh, the composition and the process of the panel. Uh, the second uh, function is to advise on policy development. So we often will bring projects that have some sort of a design or land use component to the ADP, um, particularly if it's uh, something that is district-led. Uh, but we also, in terms of development proposals, we also bring in rezonings, larger rezonings uh, for ADP comments. And thirdly, to advise on municipal projects that have a public uh, aspect to it. So. Often, if you know we're changing our streetscape standards um, and things like that, uh, we would we would bring them here for for, for advice. Uh, it's important to note that there is no uh, approval authority in the ADP. In that ADP, um, you know, uh, can ask for a project to come back, uh, but eventually, um, a project, um, whether uh, the, most of the members like it or not, has to move over to council for a decision. Um, we would take it in. ADP's advice um, in mind. So in terms of development proposals, uh, most uh, applications that end up uh, on, on ADP review are um, development permits. 
or uh, sometimes it's a development permit with a variance uh, to the zoning bylaw. Um, and so the scope of uh, ADP's mm -hmm. comments in, uh, are essentially uh, forming character um, and of the design, which includes exterior materials, textures and colors, landscape, uh, signage and lighting, um, anything that is subject to DP guide guidelines. So we now have an EOCP and we now have a much more uh, comprehensive set of guidelines uh, in terms of site layout and accessibility. Uh, we sometimes, uh, the, the, the DP guidelines are, are that, they're guidelines, they're not regulations, they're not written in stone, and they could be interpreted differently. Uh, so we, when we um, have disagreements, uh, let's say with an applicant, we want the ADP to weigh in on the interpretation of those guidelines. And finally, it's public art, uh, which is now incorporated in uh, four of the development permit areas. So it's the DPA3, which is the universal guidelines, which applies to um, multifamily developments anywhere in town. Uh, there's the gateway uh, development permit area, which is the gateway into downtown. There's the Mount Blind Channel uh, the development permit area, which is the, uh, the west side of the channel. And then commercial center, which is also downtown. So all of those uh, DPAs now have a public art component to it. Um, just to note that, you know, there are going to be certainly applications with no public art component to it, such as industrial developments uh, in the business park and, and so on. Might they have? Would they be encouraged to have public art? Would they be encouraged to? Uh, no, because the guidelines don't speak to it. So unless there's some sort of special circumstance where you know the district has some leverage and and sees a need for public art, uh, no. The, the purpose is to um, utilize that land for employment purposes. Um, and then on policy development, we will often bring in, um, you know, when, when we did the last OCP update, a, a big part of consultation around our DPA guidelines was with the ADP, um, as you guys are sort of uh, our experts uh, when it comes to interpretation of the guidelines. And there's a tremendous amount of resource at this table. And then OCP policy and zoning uh, pertaining to land use, streetscape, and development design. So if we're doing a zoning bylaw update, which we are uh, gearing up to, we will be bringing those, um, you know, anything that has relation to land use or design to the ADP. Uh, so in terms of the context, the, the bylaw context that the ADP operates in, it's, uh, you know, there's, there's really four aspects to it. There's the ADP bylaw, which sets out the procedures and the the membership, there's the official community plan, which you know we expect uh, the members are familiar with, uh, and, and if uh, there's a need, we can certainly hold a workshop uh, to familiarize the membership with the new guidelines. Uh, there's the zoning bylaw, and then finally there's the council strategic, strategic plan, which the last council had, uh, and I think this, council, this new council will also probably, uh, by new year, will have a strategic plan. So it's just, I think it's good for the members to understand what is the council's strategic mm -hmm. priorities for the next four years. Uh, in terms of current policy projects, these are the things that you're likely to see uh, in the near future. We are, like I said, doing a zoning bylaw update, which is going to be comprehensive. Uh, we're also going to be working on new development permit areas uh, in relation to wildfire, steep slopes, and protection of agricultural land. Uh, we're also going to be uh, working on waste management guidelines for multifamily developments and commercial developments. So that's more about um, amalgamating the waste management facilities into one, um, uh, one location <coughs> rather than spreading it out to each unit. And then finally, Dental Park, uh, which is a, a park that has been budgeted for this year um, in the Dental neighborhood. Um, it's tied to an affordable housing project, so as, no, as soon as we hear whether that project is a go or not, we're going to be starting on the design of that part, and we'll be bringing that here as well. That's all I had. If there's any questions, I'm happy to try and answer them. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks. Can you show that? Pardon me? Yeah, absolutely. The slides? Yes. Okay. Thanks, Jonas. We'll give you a few minutes there, Jesse. 
Pretty, pretty good to go? Yeah, okay. So next on the business uh, is DP484 at 38931 Queensway called Greenleaf. And here to present for the district is Jesse Fletcher. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Advisory Design Panel. My name is Jesse Fletcher, planner with the Community Planning and Infrastructure Department. Uh, here today to present uh, for a second time in application for development permit located at 38931 Queensway, uh, development permit 484. Uh, so the development is subject to development permit area 6, Squamish Industrial Park. Uh, and the project was previously considered by advisory design panel at the October 18th meeting. Uh, advisory design panel gave the project a C, uh, so we made a bunch of comments and requested that the applicant address the comments in return. So uh, they're back at this meeting. Uh, in your staff report, you'll see uh, a highlight of the comments that were made uh, and how the applicant has addressed them. Um, some of these include uh, the applicant has provided a turning movement study for the parking lot. Uh, the applicant has added an additional 2.5 feet to the second story. Uh, three entries have been added to the Queensway frontage. Uh, an accessibility ramp has been added. Uh, the main staircase has been widened from 4 feet to 12 feet. Uh, second staircase has been added to the northern area of the eastern frontage. Uh, second accessibility stall has been added. Uh, the internal walkway has been widened from 1.2 meters to 2 meters uh, along the frontage. An additional six Class B bicycle stalls have been added, uh, as well as a commitment to provide a bus shelter on the Queensway frontage. Uh, and the applicant has confirmed the material that they'll be using as a Luca bond in vintage rusted metal, and I believe that they brought a sample today. Uh, three variances are now uh, associated with this application, including a, a variance to the height, uh, a variance to reduce the minimum dry aisle width from 6.5 to 6.4 meters, and a variance to increase the permitted projection of awnings into the setbacks. Uh, staff are generally supportive of this application, uh, but are again seeking ADP's comments uh, and recommendations regarding the revised plan. Uh, so I'll hand it over now to the applicants to reintroduce the project. from M Plus Architecture. Um, uh, we are based in North Vancouver and working on this project. Um, I'll go um, briefly, uh, I will introduce the project briefly and then uh, focus on the changes we made since last month. Uh, the subject property is located on the southwest corner of Industrial Way and Queens Way. Uh, we are looking at uh, the north, the slide uh, on the top left is looking to the north of the uh, property. The mountains are located on the west side of the property. We are having Cal Tire on the east side across the street. Uh, this uh, image is actually our neighbors on the south side. Um, this slide is looking to the property standing on industrial at the intersection. And we'll, uh, the last, uh, the left bottom image is view uh, to the south from the Queensway. Um, the property line, uh, the property on uh, the east side, and this is a property on the north, which is an um, empty lot and used currently used as a parking lot. Um, on this slide, we're looking at the location of the building and uh, neighbors. Uh, 
top image is looking at um, the building from looking to the south. Cal Tire is on Memphis Street. Uh, this image is uh, looking, standing on the south side, looking to the north. Uh, and this image is standing on the industrial way intersection, looking towards the west. Um, so um, that's the site plan. And um, the building is located with um, the geometry of the building is coming from the shape of the uh, property and um, dictated by the setbacks that we're having. Uh, the building has a strong presence at the street. It's right on the setbacks 20 feet from uh, Queensway and 10 foot from uh, North Side. Uh, one of the major comments that we received um, was to create uh, more uh, connections from the district board to the building. Uh, for that reason, we added a set of stairs on the north side. Uh, as we go to the middle of the property, uh, right here, we added a, another set of stairs. Uh, it, was, it used to be five foot, now we have widened up to 12 foot. And we also added a ramp with 8% eight, eight slope um, just next to the stairs. Um, the stairs and the ramp are conveniently located near the bus stop. Um, the, we will um, provide a, a bus shelter, uh, which is going to be relocated on that area, along with three bike, additional uh, bike rack for the district. Uh, um, as part of the service agreement, we will uh, build additional 15 meter uh, of the sidewalk which will cover the neighbors on the south side. Uh, uh, so we try to address the connections and accessibility by adding these elements. And as we go to the site, there is a driving drive out. Um, um, previously, the car were overhanging on the landscape buffer. Uh, we're proposing a six foot six uh, landscape buffer along uh, the property. Um, now we, re we reconfigure the parking layout and uh, the landscape is, at this point, is completely clear. There is no car overhang there. Um, there is a um, garbage enclosure which is tucked in in the back with no visibility to the side. We are proposing two loading bay uh, and um, we had a um, traffic consultant engaged and they provide us with a study. Um, I have the studies later on but an uh, SU9 will work uh, and can easily maneuver in the uh, parking lot. We are proposing uh, two uh, accessible parking right in front of the lobby uh, with a six foot wide uh, ramp right in front of the, uh, again, the parking entry, uh, the, the lobby entry and the elevator that goes upstairs. Um, we are, uh, some of the parkings, two of the parking spots are going to be 15 minutes or for the staff for the time that a truck is coming for the delivery. What we assume is most of the delivery are happening early in the morning before the parking is becoming uh, packed and jammed. Um, so we are uh, positive that there would be no issue for a truck that can um, come into the site and deliver the products. These are some of the site details, the garbage enclosure and garbage facilities that has been designed um, with uh, guidelines of City of Vancouver. Um, this is slides addressing the flood highlights and alternative solution. Uh, we are proposing a <coughs> six foot high retaining wall designed by geotechnical engineer and will accommodate the same amount of volume of uh, flood that is expected uh, in a certain period of time. Uh, above the retaining wall, we are proposing a uh, guard rail, and I will go through the design of that guard rail later on. Uh, this is uh, the main floor. Uh, basically, this is a light industrial building. We're on our main floor is 15,000 square foot. We are proposing uh, four units. 
uh, unit one and then north uh, potentially going to be a dance studio or a fitness. Unit two and three are going to be a warehouse and unit four is a um, brewery or restaurant. The developer of this project, he also owns a brewery in North Vancouver and um, he was confident that the site, he can easily, one of the comments that we received last time was uh, maybe um, about that, uh, was about how uh, the site art is going to operate with uh, having that brewery on the site. And he uh, running this business for many years and he can easily, uh, he confirmed that easily with a pickup truck, he can uh, deliver the items that he needs and the site is mm. uh, working well for uh, what he has in mind. Um, this lobby is uh, located uh, in the center with elevator in the middle that goes upstairs and service upstairs also working out one of the exits we're having the second exits and this the pink area the blue one is a mechanical uh, center all the build, all the units uh, are having double doors uh, unit four and unit number one and the lobby they are having a uh, nine foot eight foot opening eight foot by eight foot um, we are not using overhead doors as it cannot pass the requirements of um, energy code uh, we are using triple glazing double doors for the entire building uh, we added um, in order to create more connections to the site, we are adding more double door um, to basically to the front along the Queen's Way. Um, we are having a double door and the stairs on unit number one, one in unit number three, and another set of doors on unit number four, which is the restaurant. Why not unit? Why not unit? Um, why two? Why not unit number two? And this is a warehouse. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we thought it, we're just having a door uh, to support the exits. And this is, uh, we're looking at upstairs, um, the exit <coughs> doors and the common area and the washrooms. We're also having a small residential suite upstairs. There is a deck, direct access to the deck from the stairs, so uh, it could be used for people in the restaurant to use the stairs as a patio, <coughs> or um, can be a supportive um, outdoor space for unit uh, number five upstairs. That's our rooftop units on the upper roof, and um, shows the lower deck as well. Uh, on the lower deck, we are proposing a 3 foot 6 uh, parapet to be used as, um, also work as a guard rail as well. <coughs> and uh, on this image, we're looking at proposed materials. Um, originally, we were proposing uh, using cotton steel. Uh, we reconsider using that material due to the bleeding and uh, potential rust on the long run. We are proposing a look up on uh, color, a look up on vintage series uh, with rusted metal look uh, to create uh, still uh, getting that feel of rustic uh, material for an industrial building. We are proposing um, canopies uh, to be used on black uh, metal, the flashing canopies and all the curtain, um, curtain wall frames are going to be black to create that contrast against the vintage look of the aluminum. Um, the rooftop units and, uh, and the 10 foot um, concrete stand would be natural concrete color and gray <coughs> tone. Um, we're looking at the elevations and configuration of the windows. We are proposing long and, and narrow uh, windows to create some movements with different um, uh, width. And every now and then we add it. Mostly at the corners we are proposing uh, different geometry, not, not like a square window to bring more lights in and uh, make the building uh, more transparent and uh, lighter. Um, 
this is looking to the north and east elevations. Um, I'm going back to okay, uh, the west elevations. We provided continuous um, canopies um, along the east side. As you will see, they, they're um, sitting on different heights, but they are having enough overlap to protect the pedestrians against the rain. And on this side, uh, we also, uh, where we are having that wide stairs, we are having that continuous um, canopies along the east side, and uh, the canopy breaks down and continue later um, after we get, you know, once we get into the fitness center. On the north side, there is no sidewalk, so we didn't need that continuous. And this uh, slide shows our signage and how we are mm, complying with the bylaw. Uh, our sections, one of the changes that uh, we made is adding uh, to the building height. We are seeking a variance for the building height. <coughs> Currently, the upper floor is 12 feet high, which is uh, suitable for a warehouse use. Mm, this is our civil drawings. Um, the stormwater management studies has been completed by a civil engineer. Uh, and, um, service connections has been studied by them. Uh, this is the um, passenger car turning movement and um, SU9 turning movement. Uh, completed by traffic engineer, and it shows that the proposed side works for a car to maneuver without need to back up to the side, uh, to the street. And this is our landscape um, plan. Uh, unfortunately, our landscape architect couldn't be here today. Um, one of the comments that we had, I will try to to her milk. Um, she has worked with the district to propose the plants that are bear smart and they do not fruit. Um, the stormwater uh, management plan is provided by allocating a central rain garden. The plants uh, in the rain garden can allow slow infiltration. Um, during uh, the rainy seasons. We're proposing a snow um, storage area on the north. The plants she's proposing can uh, maintain the load of the snow during the snow season. Uh, there are a couple of mature trees on the west side that we are maintaining them and it's part of our landscape area. And uh, here is the design, proposed design for the guard rails uh, with the curved balustrade to, um, which do not allow climbability with uh, horizontal wires. And we are having like 200 foot wide retaining, long retaining wall and this uh, guard rail is going to be all along uh, on Queensway. Uh, and this is the bike rack that we are proposing. Um, the survey. So, if there is any question, okay. Thanks very much. Uh, appreciate the highlighting of differences mm -hmm. from last time around. Uh, yep. Yeah. Can I just add one one more thing? Uh, as just stated. Um, the planning department is supportive of the requested variances, uh, mainly because um, the applicants have agreed to do a number of things that would exceed the uh, servicing requirements or the DPA guidelines when it comes to the provision of sidewalks and the bus, uh, the bus stop of the structure in it, um, as well as provision of more entrances and stairways on the Queensway side. So we just wanted to note that. Okay. Thank you. What we'll do is we'll do a round of questions and then we'll do a round of comments. Um, 
So does anyone want to start with a round of questions? Sure. Okay, thanks. Um, just one question with regards to the material of the roof um, and what that is and if there was consideration to how that um, situates itself in terms of sustainability as well as roof activity and things like that. Mm -hmm. On uh, upper deck, we're using um, paveways and pedestal, yeah. so um, in that term. And um, I have to mention that all of our installations are, we are having outsolations, so installations are all um, on exterior layers. And on upper floor, we're using SPS. In terms of addressing um, sustainability, we can choose lighter color to reduce the action. Okay. Thank you. I have a question. Mike, do you want to? Um, I, yeah, I mean, I guess my one question was, could you just explain what the three families get where that you guys are in support of? Yeah. overall height. Yeah, so uh, to address the comment uh, from the advisory design panel about maybe a uh, floor not being tall enough, they've added 2.5 feet to the upper floor. Sure. Uh, so you have 12 feet, I believe, for the yes. top story, and that increases the height from 10.68 to 12 meters. Uh, the second variance is for the drive aisle, uh, they're proposing a variance from 6.5 to 6.4 meters, uh, and that was to preserve the landscape boulevard. Uh, Pine Park hasn't reviewed that one in detail, um, so it will either be a, line, a variance of the landscape buffer by a little bit more to the drive aisle. Uh, and then the final variance was uh, for the projection of uh, the canopy into the setback, where we're going to project up to 0.76 meters, and uh, proposing 1.2 um, yeah, I didn't really have many questions to ask. I think you addressed everything that I was concerned with last time. So. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks. I just had one question about uh, this. Uh, how do you pronounce it? Alcabon? Yes. Uh, is it a sheet product? So is it is it? Painted and all the paints are the same for the sheet, and you just kind of repeat the sheet. It's a system that will come in a four foot by twelve feet. What we are proposing, it's basically like looks like a print. Uh, right. In order to break down the pattern, we are proposing to use a two feet panel and a four feet panel in a random. Um, I have it in my black and white um, drawings. You're having a random size, so when we are looking at the facade, it doesn't look like a repetitive uh, pattern. Okay, thanks. Yes. Thank um, I'm sorry I missed your last presentation, so I'm just catching up a bit here, but um, mostly just wondering how you're addressing the second floor at the windows. So you're having a transom panel that would be the same as the, like your renderings all look like it's the you're not highlighting where the floor hits the the curtain wall so I'm just wondering if you're gonna have like a transom panel in the window mm, we the just window. paint the um, slab edge so uh, in most of and uh, okay if we look at the some of the areas you are having the canopies right where you are having the second floor which creates that shadow mm -hmm. uh, but the rest uh, the um, slab sits behind we are having our walls are 15 um, inch wide because of the thickness we are adding five inch insulation outside and thickness of materials and rain, uh, rain screen so the uh, slab is sitting uh, behind and we are painting the edge of the slab. So when you're outside looking in, you'll see the edge of the slab through the clear glass? Yes. Okay. Do you have a code consultant on this project? We do have a code consultant. Okay. Um, and then was there any thought to, I know there was comments last time about the entry off of Queensway, and it looks like you increased the width of the stair yes. there. Was there, it feels like it's sort of more south of the building. Um, um, was there a reason for that? A um, couple of reasons. One is um, closer to the future bus stop, which is going to be here. And then uh, the other reason is we're having, basically, if you're looking at main <coughs> floor, we're having our restaurants around here. Okay. Uh, and it attracts more people 
to walk by and also goes to the second exit or entry to the top unit if we need to. Okay. Um, that was all my questions. Uh, thank you. Um, to, uh, looking at the turning movements out on Queensway, does it, uh, am I right, the vehicle is going to cross the center line to get in and out, or get out? I see it dash lines and it looks like it crosses the center line to turn out. Is that correct, or where is center line on that drawing? It's no, it does not cross the center line. Uh, For the that's the passenger car. SU nine turning. Oh, over. the SU nine. Uh, yeah. Yes, the SU nine cross the center line from here, and then uh, you know our aisles are um, uh, the street is twenty one feet wide, and um, so you are proposing the a crossing the center line yeah. to get that loading truck out, which. Your loading truck is? It's, it's like nine meters. Okay. Nine feet, so it's, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. And have you looked at sight lines? What your sight line distance is from exiting out of that entrance? It's around the corner. I'm just wondering about do you have stopping sight distance? I know there's an entrance way just south of that, but Here? this one may be a little bit. Just the question is, have you looked at sight lines? Um, in terms of the slope? Or? Uh, if you're in the car and you're stopped and you're going left or right, okay. have you got the sight line or long? I know you're planting a bunch of trees. Have, mm -hmm. you, have you looked at that? Um, that's a good question. We have okay. to Okay. okay, yeah. Um, along the frontage, you have an Allen block wall along there. It's about 200 feet, you mentioned. Um, the length, yes. Yeah. Is there yeah. any consideration yeah. for, say, rock stack, or why you chose the Allen block as the alternative? Rock stack has been used along the corridor uh, in a attractive look, more natural mm -hmm. than an Allen block? Have you considered different materials or is it a geotech thing? The, um, geotechnical proposed that material, but you're also having landscape, um, just planting, lots of plants you know, planted in front of that and they will grow to cover the retaining wall. So okay, on the, on the lower yes. elevation. Where, yeah, all the green area, we're mm -hmm. having plants covering the uh, Allen block. So yeah. We still are choosing the color that complements the, uh, we're using natural tone, mm -hmm. complements the uh, exterior material, but it's going, going to be mostly color. Right, okay. Okay. Um, and then the final question for the drainage coming on the south side of those parking stalls. Yes. Um, South side, south property line. Yes, we are having uh, stone, um, What is the cross ball there, and what happens to drainage along that? Um, area? The side gently slopes here. We are proposing the rain garden all the way. Yeah. This uh, square is going to be here, and um, we are having. Um, Hatch basin that collects um, the oil that comes from uh, the parking uh, lot, and then it will connect to the uh, city connections. Yeah, so I'm just worried about drain. Is drainage going to get into that landscape, rain garden, or buffer, and then drain onto the adjacent property? Uh, so a cross section. That no, it will. Con it will get connected uh, at some point on the drainage and connected to the same side. So that rain garden is lower than the adjacent property? Um, or it will be sloped that way. But um, okay. we definitely wouldn't go to the south. Okay.
Mm -hmm. um, just looking at a cross section on your A101.2. Section 7. Section 7 right in the middle there. It looks like uh, one up, one up from that. There you go. It looks like it's falling away. You've got wheel stops and then it looks like it drains to the property line. That's all I'm doing. If there's a swale in there, I understand that's fine. No, it just doesn't I show believe we are detail. having both swale treatment. There, this section okay. is just showing the slope, uh, the existing slope, slope and how okay. uh, we can, if we can manage a one two five slope uh, for the flood wider. Uh, this one does not represent our uh, site configuration. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I can speak to that really briefly. Uh, because uh, Queensway is a secondary floodway, uh, the treatment of fill between the setback line and the property line needs to be a no more than a five to one fill rate. Uh, what they're proposing is not necessarily a five to one slope, um, but filling a little bit more uh, farther up and less lower down, which has been approved by our engineer because of the same volume in that area. Yeah. So uh, these drawings were just more detail regarding how they're doing that. Yeah, okay. All right, yeah. Just so drainage doesn't go on. Okay, that's my question. Thank you. Awesome. I guess uh, to stop, Jesse, uh, did, didn't the FCL get changed from six to seven in this area? Um, that is a great question. Uh, they are meeting their flood construction level. The flood hazard assessment has been reviewed. Uh, the FCL, I don't know if it changed, but it has been set through our flood mapping. I just worked out a project up the street and it, and it went up a meter. So I'm just seeing that this is saying six. So maybe just check on that. Mm -hmm. um, in which case, if, um, my next question was, is the FCL really driving the reason for an F, a height variance? Because you're kind of stuck between a, a wet and a response. <laughs> <laughs> no, is it the FCL that's really making it difficult to, to meet a height requirement? Um, in which case, I think a variance might be appropriate. Um, did you explore putting the loading on the building side since now the loading function has to cross the whole parking lot and does it seem to back onto the warehouse component? Um, basically, most of the loadings are going to happen uh, to this side, I mean, on the, on the parking lot area. Uh, Sorry. Okay, let me go to. So basically, most of our uh, loading and unloading are happening through parking. But your loading bays are across the parking lot from that? Yes, yes, they are okay. right there, here. Yeah. Yes. I just wondered why they aren't located on the side of the, the building where because, you would actually um, be loading. That's where we could locate okay. it and not have enough uh, land for the truck to maneuver. It's close to the lobby, it's close to our <coughs> main entries. Um, we just located that. Okay. And, close and you've got a, an area there that's cordoned off so that they can get through with hand trucks and stuff like that? That's right. Yeah. Okay. And Good. we have widened up the sidewalk in that area so it would create a nice path for the load to be carried to other areas. Okay. Yeah, I had a question about how much fill you're going to have on the site, but that really depends what FCL you're given, because uh, if you're at seven, there's a lot of fill around the edges, and then that drainage way will be challenging. Um, your landscape architect isn't here. I had a couple questions for them. Um, why they pick such a small street tree? It's, it's a compact version. At the, it's kind of down in the view corridor that... Uh, Richard was asking about, so I don't know if you... Um, one I can um, answer is uh, there's also a BC hydro line, so um, I believe that one of the uh, items that she chose um, these type of trees were to have enough sort of um, depth to allow the BC uh, hydro line to pass by. Uh, what she's proposed and makes up conifers and um, like um, 
mm. different types of trees to create that um, evergreen look and a seasonal. Um, to staff, is there a street tree for that part of Bingo? Uh, no, there's no street tree. Yeah. I don't buy okay. it. Um, I think that's uh, all the questions I have. Thank you. Um, I'm just curious in regards to your statement about the energy quote and not having roll-up doors, what energy quote that pertains to industrial buildings uh, precludes roll-up doors? Um, we are going to use a step code 3 for this building. Um, this is our voluntary upgrade to meet the next step code. Uh, and um, None of the overhead door they are not they do not create that cell quality that a building will need to uh, maintain the energy. Um, so uh, and another argument that we can have is uh, an overhead door is eight foot by ten. But we're proposing for the units that they are having more um, low get in, they are eight foot by eight foot. So we are proposing a wider door than a typical double door. Typically they are six foot wide, we are proposing eight foot by eight foot to allow Two four that. foot doors, is that what you're saying? Yes. On each unit? Uh, on, um, <laughs> on unit number one, on the lobby, and on uh, the restaurant on unit four. I'm still unclear about how the step code applies to an industrial use building. If that's what your stated building is. <laughs> if I may, um, it, you're right. It doesn't apply to industrial buildings. Um, what the applicants are proposing is voluntary, um, achieving the step three on voluntary basis. Okay. But the district bylaw does not require it yeah. to be done. And by doing that, you're hampering the, the industrial usability of the building, uh, in a sense, because the access is, is smaller than some tenants may need. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to make that clear. But eventually, this is a step calls when we have that you know, across the province for all the buildings, so we are one a step ahead of the game. So. If you're calling it an industrial building, and yeah. I'm just asking if there's a step code that relates to industrial buildings. That, we're talking about here. So, um, I've also just wanted to make clear that the maximum vehicle length uh, under this study is 30 feet, nine meters. Um, feet. For, mm, for them, yes. For them. Yeah, and that's actually a, a, a relatively small truck. Um, most medium small delivery trucks are at least 35 feet long. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear as well. There's there's very few trucks that are less than 35 feet. So uh, anyway, that's um, that's a detail. Um, and one other thing, uh, what is the dimensions of the elevator that goes to load up to the uh, industrial warehouse space on the second floor? Um, I believe we're looking at it. Um the clearance is um, four foot six by five, I believe. So that's what we are. I don't have the dimension here, but um, that's what it's. Four and a half feet wide by five feet deep. Yes. And the height. Okay, so it, it's not a standard industrial uh, elevator size. Okay, that's my question. Thank you. I echo John's concerns on the vehicle allowances in here, um, and then the entranceway, uh, that driveway. How well is it lit? Because that is a blind corner and traffic comes around that corner very quickly. You also have proposed that you're building a bus shelter on the north side of that driveway. Yes. 
that's going to be cause of life, so I can tell you that. There's one in our south, south of there on Buffy, mm -hmm. and it causes a blind around the corner. Yes. And getting in and out of a driveway is, is blind. It causes a lot of concern for cars. We'll just have stick to questions. Oh, okay. Just, I just wanted to we'll ask you, what is the lighting in that? Mm, um, there has been a uh, lighting studies done by our uh, electrical engineer. Uh, we had in our previous slides, unfortunately, I do not have it here, but uh, the site is well lit. We are having um, um, some light poles that completely uh, lit the uh, parking areas and the entry. And how will you accommodate sight lines along that with the bus shelter there? The bus shelter location is not set yet. It's going to be studied with, uh, and we will coordinate with the um, engineers uh, later on, but I'm just showing you like potential location is going to be in that area. Okay. But we will consider the site. Okay. And just the other question. Find my address on the bus shelter. That was a district request that they put in a bus shelter. Okay. When, when the bus shelter goes in, we will have to look at what's the best location for it. For sign lines? Yeah. Okay. The other question was just on this building material yes. and how it weathers in Squamish water. Uh, it's a durable material. There is a, a guarantee on um, material on wood and rust. It wouldn't chip out. Uh, that's a high end material that we're proposing. I just probably three questions. Um, in the siting um, analysis that you were doing, were, was there any consideration of locating your access on the north side of the site and, and letting the building be looser on the south? What was the rationale to, to put all of your it access? It was very on close to the intersection, so we couldn't. Uh, that wasn't a very mm -hmm. good idea to start from that location. Okay. So that would be a bad. And then um, the uh, just a question here around it sort of picks up on I think Tannis is um, leading into it. Some of the is the, the code side. There's there's quite a few code things in here that I think they're going to dictate a, a, a more expensive building. And I'm wondering um, as a question uh, the. I think you've confirmed there is a code consultant. Maybe through the commentary, we can offer some some things. I think that would assist. But um, I think as a question, what is, what are you considering the construction of the building? Is it um, steel? steel? Okay. Steel. Okay. Maybe we can comment on that a little bit because it relates to some things. Um, the the other question was. Um, Answer the question about reveals and how reveals are kind of. Um, yeah, but in your original presentation, when we saw you last time, um, you had a patio on the south side for the future yeah. restaurant that's been eliminated in this design? Um, we have, um, because there was some a conflict between um, pedestrians and and other things. So we removed that one. There is a potential to use uh, a quick deck as a pattern. Okay. Okay. Any last questions before we move to comments? No? Okay. Uh, we'll just roll into comments. Jenna, do you want to start with comments? Sure. So thanks for your presentation overall. Uh, in terms of the changes from last to this, this time, I think the parking design um, works out well. In terms of the entry into the site, while engineering is studying all of that, I encourage them to also take a look at those trees and ensure that that's not impeding the sight lines as well. Um, they may have to nudge over a bit. Uh, last time we spoke at length about the design of the frontage in terms of the sidewalk width, width, width and such, and so I think that's advanced in, in a good way. Um, we see a lot of cir more circulation opportunities on that front of the walk, so it's a great change. Um, just as an aside, uh, Little Bird told me that the new code is changing the guardrail design and cables won't be allowed, so when it comes out in December, just take a peek, because apparently that's no longer on the plate for us, unfortunately. Uh, 
seems that the facade material is a really nice move, but I'll let <coughs> my fellow architects uh, speak to that in more in depth. Um, with the variants, I think you know, planning spoke of them good, good rationalization why those variances are there, so I don't see a concern with that myself. Um, we spoke briefly of the roof deck, and I would just encourage your team to look at the material and make sure that we uh, that it is reducing the glare. And uh, yeah, good building for us. Thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for putting the time on the presentation. Um, I think all of the sort of comments and questions I had the first time around were addressed pretty well with the front of the building. Uh, with the ramp widening the stairs, uh, the walk around in the front wider, it looks a lot more usable now. Um, I think it's, aside from maybe limiting the building in an industrial sense, I think it's pretty awesome that you guys are going for the Energy Step Code 3. Um, it's definitely going to add a lot of difficulty and cost to the building. Um, I can imagine what you're going through there, but um, yeah, I think it looks awesome. Oops. Yeah, I, I don't have much to add from the last time around. I think uh, the changes that you have brought have improved the site. Um, my only sticking point would just be large vehicle circulation and um, and using the, if, if a brewery is going to go there, just having the height to accommodate tanks of a significant size and having a grain silo and having access to that point. So, but if your client can make it work, they can make it work. So, uh, we'll see how this one unfolds. Thank you. Um, I think the site planning is pretty flawed on this project. Um, I, I just can't get a handle on how it's meeting the zoning bylaws when it's impeding dry while requirements and parking stalls are being cut off for those requirements. I, I mean the traffic study is all over the place. I would just really consider that again for the usability in the back here. Um, I think there's some code issues for sure at a quick glance and I think it's going to impact how the facade of the building resolves itself. Um, so I, I would look at that. I definitely think what's being represented as your window composition will not actually end up being that. Um, I think your ramp at the front is needs to be looked at as well. You probably have a few more landings introduced along there. Um, and I wasn't here for the first presentation, but I actually like the core 10. I think the Luca Bond is, you know, it's trying to be metal and it's not metal and Dwayne can speak to architects hate fake stuff. Um, so I, if, it, if you can resolve the detail of the leaching of the material within the Pro within the project, so maybe a, ch a channel under it, I I'm not sure, but um, I would encourage to look at the core 10 again. Um, overall, I like the aggressive angle along Queensway. I think mm -hmm. that's, you know, that apex corner, that's a pretty bold architectural move. Um, I do like the composition of the windows. I think, you know, I understand the how you've done the site layout based on where industrial way is at. Um, the site next door has some major site line issues and I think you'll encounter the same here. Um, so just something to be aware of. Um, but yeah, generally it's, it's a nice looking building. Thanks. Um... Yeah, I, I like the look of the building. i um, getting pretty bored of what's being built right now. There's too much of the same, so this is a nice welcome addition, so I like that. Um, my comments related are related to accessibility or access, and it would be to consider the sight lines there. Um, re review the entrance as far as, um, or sorry, the Allen block wall material, or the retaining wall material, that could be a natural 
rock stack wall, I think that would look better. This might be too uniform for too long, being an Allen block. And um, the hydrant, I believe you need to be, it's only sticky here, but I think you need to be 45 meters from a hydrant to the Siamese. And you show 45.6. I know it's not much, but you just need to move that hydrant a little bit and you meet the code requirement. And um, those are my comments. Thank you. Yeah, this was my first time seeing the project, and I was uh, quite taken by the general overall form and character of the building. Um, I think there's some detail that will come about as you make this thing more real, um, <coughs> that you'll answer a lot of our questions and concerns. Um, actually, I found, oh, I kind of in uh, counter to Thames's comment, I find the site planning actually quite good. Uh, the requirement is that parking is away from the street or it is in parts of this area. Uh, I think that's pretty sensitive. It, it unfolds as a really kind of bold building phase to that curve, so I think that that's kind of exciting. I read the building as Cortan and wasn't sure what that product was. Um, so at a building materiality level, yeah, I would have loved to see the Cortan. I don't know if that would meet your budget anyways. Uh, but uh, as long as that doesn't look like arborite, it does a little bit close up. <coughs> so, um, but uh, I would encourage you to look at, at a richness of material there anyways. Um, check the FCL for sure, um, and that might change things quite a bit. Um, it's too bad this, the landscape architect wasn't available, so the comments that should be passed on to the landscape architect at least from my point, is uh, the street tree is, is a very benign little thing. And this is a big, bold, busy street and could use something of some substance that is high above the driving plane, the view site. So at least we want to be dealing with trunks instead of canopy down in that view, view corridor. And it would be in scale with the building. And you've ghosted in some trees on your model there that are appropriate scale that aren't consistent with what's been specified. Um, the landscape architect should know that they should be re referencing the Canadian landscape standards and not the BC landscape standards. Those don't exist anymore. Um, that guardrail, I believe, is part of egress, so it's climbable. So unless it's raked, um, that uh, that railing is you know, we're fine for the waterfront Vancouver, but it's not part of a, of a building. So, and maybe the code change is changing on that too. So I would take a look at that guardrail, although it looks really good, uh, you might end up with something really much more mundane than that. Uh, and then uh, I think civil details need to be worked out. Uh, um, Richard's touched on a few of them. I'm thinking about slopes and drainage and making, making it real. Uh, you know, I think there's a few things that have to be proved out at a civil level. Um, but I think in general, I think it's a pretty exciting project and I look forward to seeing it realized. Um, I actually really like the building, oddly enough. It's, it's, uh, and it is, um, it is an industrial building uh, per the building design. Um, but it's very unfortunate that the actual access to the building for the use is is uh, so hampered in the, in, in the sense that the doors uh, won't be big enough for a lot of industrial users. The elevator is definitely going to be a problem for anyone hoping to do uh, loading upstairs or, or warehousing of any sort up there. Uh, and then also a 30-foot truck is, is not... Um, when a bigger truck arrives on the site, and it's not yet, it's when, because they will. A um, uh, smaller truck might work for your brewery client, but there are other users who could be in this building and probably will uh, over the many years in the future. Um, that bigger truck will have a problem. It will have to stop on Queensway on the corner, which it won't be able to do. Um, turning across the oncoming lane just to get in to the site is not only illegal, it's very dangerous on a corner. Um, so that, that definitely needs to be examined again. I don't know if it means a wider 
uh, apron um, on, on the property side to allow for uh, a turn that comes in tighter, but something needs to be done there. Um, and I, I'm just concerned that with some of the uses that are described, that, it, that we will definitely see off-site challenges um, in as far as parking um, and, and the loading trucks, as I've described. So, um, but, you know, it, it's, uh, it might just be too much building for the site. I'm not sure that there needs to be, uh, this whole loading concept really needs to be addressed, I think, more properly. Um, uh, for, for building up the I-1 use that has maybe only two uses in that whole list of 12 different uses that I-1 can do in this building. Um, I can't see the whole building being a yoga studio and a brewery. Um, the other users are going to have definitely have a problem, so you might want to think about that. And we might want to think about how it affects the off-site. Um, so that's my recommendation. Um, recommendation again is, is and comments are again to be the sight lines and the, the entranceway again speaking to John's concerns again is how do you get in and out of there around line corners um, and large trucks and those two center um, uh, buildings you don't know who the tenants are going to be and they may require larger vehicles they may also require um, elevators and things like that get up and down. So I, should, I would caution to really think about how it, this building is going to be used, not just right now, but in the future. Um, and even the yoga space may not always be a yoga space. It may be something else. Um, so think about the usability of the building in an industrial perspective. Um, I really like the design because it's, it is a nice break from the standard you know, box that's going up along that road. So I hope you set a new building <laughs> design standard for that area. It is very lovely. Um, but again, your sight lines along with the trees and the roadway are, are something to really, really consider. Thank you. Well, again, thank you very much um, you know, for this. And it's, the presentation is very good and it's come together. And I think you've addressed most of the the comments and so it's I think it makes it obviously commendable just to, to move this forward with some comments from panel that the, one of the things that, that stands out a bit is in what was presented in the initial presentation was um, and we agreed with and I think we supported was was the the appearance in the form of the building it, it was I think we all somewhat agreed we really liked it so those comments from him the, the one of the things that did echo I think a little bit in the last presentation John was just, I think, probably just the functionality, you know, at the ground plane, uh, the loading, again, and the access, and from a pedestrian point of view, from an accessible point of view, and from a loading truck point of view. So, you know, I'm wondering maybe if the, those struggle a little bit here, and I think perhaps with some more comments um, from this panel, they can probably take it away. But um, I think the the, the larger the item that I only get concerned about in design panels a little bit is that when we see applications come forward, there's a commitment for materials. And there's also a commitment in the design is that it's gonna be, in this case, so many stories and so big and, and all of that. Um, and one of the things that sort of triggers in my mind is I'm only worried is that this is a very expensive building. Um, a Luca Bond is a superior material, like the Corton, um, that in my mind I had questions, is, is this actually going to get built this way? And, the Corton, in my experience, wouldn't wouldn't my client would shoot me because it would be too much money. <laughs> but granted, that's great. You know, if it can move forward, the Lucabon is equally expensive. I find, mm -hmm. in my experience, it's a it's a superior material, and I do recommend it for the project. I mean, I picked the right material. I'm only worried that if we came back in a year and a half after it's built, that in fact mm -hmm. there's been some amendment to planning to say it's not that material anymore because they couldn't afford it, right? So I. There is a commitment here. <laughs> there is a commitment here, and I think because that is um, such a big part of this design, if that was to change, it would send the DP back okay. for an amendment. The, the other thing that makes this an expensive building, I, and, and I think that just we can share this with the application or the applicant, is that 
I think what Tanis was picking up on too is that that uh, the firefighter access and the code and the exit exposure on this is going to actually change your window design significantly, meaning that that you need an exit out and you've got to get people, you've got to walk people past a burning window is how the code thinks about it. So you're, you're going to be dealing with exit exposure. One of the interesting things on this one also, I think that's going to make this expensive, and I, and I think you can change this, is that, is that your grade, you're more than 1.5 meters above grade, which triggers another story, which in fact, you're showing a two-story building, but under a building code, you're a three-story building, you're automatically triggered into non-combustible construction where you could be building this out of wood or steel. So you'll immediately be triggered into fire resistance rating. So you're paying for concrete, and I don't know if you're actually going to build it this way. So maybe just as a caution, I'm sure it can be resolved, is that, is that you're, you're, maybe if you can work with the grades in and around the stairs to get this out of this triggering a third story, you'd be on safer ground. So you don't want to get caught on any of this. So there's exit exposure that's expensive, that's going to change your windows, and I'm worried that it changes the look, which changes the overall acceptance from this panel. The materiality is probably really expensive. Um, anyway, that's a comment. And then maybe have a look, have another look at your code approach. Um, because when you said that you're exposing the slab edges to the window, that doesn't make sense from a fire rating point of view, because you need to get the fire rating right to the exterior wall. So. There's a whole bunch of little things in here that, that I think you can resolve, but don't don't let it, you know, you're gonna, you have to look at it a little more, right? It's more time to be spent on this stuff. Um, so just some big cautions, because I don't think you want to go backwards. The other bit um, is the loading and the, at the ground plane. I, I'm, I don't, bringing the loading truck, and it, to John's point, I think it actually could be a bigger loading truck. So. Um, to bring it all the way into the back of the site is, I think, uh, could be a dangerous thing. It's a problem thing. I know it comes at different hours, but and to have a two 15-minute stalls, I mean, I'm going to park there right away. And then, you know, so <laughs> it, it's it needs to be just maybe a little bit more believable as to how loading works. And I think there's some questions coming from now. So I think the the issue of sight lines access bringing the loading stall on. I, I think you can resolve loading by maybe looking at loading as a lay-by, perhaps, design, and maybe you can explore that with your civil transportation consultant, but I think those are probably the bigger items that are going to impact your ground plane. Um, and then mm -hmm. just the last comment, I think, uh, given it's a, it's, it's a very nice design and very good form, I think your front, your front needs to loosen up. It's a very strict and strong building. Um, I think you have an opportunity to, to, to actually have some fun with that front patio walkway. It doesn't need to be as linear. You don't need to walk people past another door. I think you could undulate it. You could put some benches or seating near the canopies and all that sort of thing, just to give it another layer of softness relative to what the landscape is trying to do as well. So, um, Otherwise, um, I think, uh, just remember you are making a commitment here through uh, through, through materiality and costs, um, and you'll you'll work to resolve some of these code things without changing your building. Uh, I think the variances are okay in general. I think it seems, you know, I think it doesn't seem to be any danger or anything that's sort of attached to that. So, um, so just I think the yeah, just those three comments. I think and and really probably just take another really loosen up the front of the buildings. I think it could be a lot softer. It could be a little a little uh, less strict. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Any final comments? Just a may I have a question. <laughs> has Jeff Driggs, your code consultant, done a preliminary cut at this Yes. Okay. Yeah, he has reviewed and um, um, when I was commenting on the slab edge, I was um, just more emphasizing and the look what we'll see from outside, but we are having a very breaking the two uh, levels, so and will be where we are having the volumes, we are having enough fire suppression to maintain the two hours fire ratings. And uh, the allowable windows, it has been calculated. On the north side, we are proposing fire shutters, but the rest of the building are going to be um, not rated. And the preliminary review will support the look of the building that we propose so far. Okay. And just to follow up on one of your comments, Dwayne, uh, I mean, I 
wouldn't want to see that front wall get fussed up too much because you know the building has a beautiful hard curve and I think if it was a, a, a nice wall um, that would be really successful but if you started undulating it becomes a different animal that's incongruent with the building I think. Yeah, I was just speaking to the, uh, the landscape. You were thinking that maybe not mm -hmm. under the uh, landscape. I wasn't talking about. Sure I was talking about. No, though. Sorry, the landscape wall. I think should have the same power as the building. Right. Yeah. yeah. The, the only option to that is that I mean, fire shutters are expensive too, so we don't want to. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. Don't say fire. <laughs> <laughs> They are expensive. They're mechanical devices. They are all the time. Yeah, yeah, the fire yeah. department comes in every three months to <laughs> test them, right? So, um, but I think that my comment about the path only was that um, you've got to exit people past the windows. So I'm wondering maybe it has the opportunity to be in the Yeah, so yeah. That's the point. Not stylistic, but more practically. Me. <laughs> and then, and, yeah, because just, I mean, the code wants that path 10 feet away from the window. Yeah. yeah. So, so right away you're forced into, or you've got to change your exit path. Yeah. And the exit, the stairwell is not aligned, the internal stairwell is not aligned with the exterior stairwell, so you are automatically are forcing people past other fire compartments. So it just asks more questions, but I'm sure you can help. Okay. Thank you. That's, uh, that's good. So with that, we should make a potential recommendation. We have four to go through. Um, a, mm -hmm. ADP supports the project as presented. Does not need to see the project review. For, does not need the project to return for further review. B, ADP supports the project as presented. Would like the applicant to work with staff to resolve the following recommendations. We can summarize those. C, ADP supports the project presented and would like the applicant to resolve the following recommendations and return to present the revised project, and D, ADP does not support the project as presented. So with that, do we have a motion for A, B, C, or D? Maybe. Motion for B, ADP supports the project as presented. We'd like the applicant to work with staff to resolve the following recommendation. Is there any discussion on that? Second. Do we need to summarize the recommendations? Is there any dis uh, discussion amongst us to clarify some of those recommendations? It would be good to be clear on what those recommendations are. Okay, I had um, a number of them here, but I'll try to summarize them, and if I missed anything. Or... Uh, so the first one was review the trees and the elevation re related to the sight line. Um, there was comment of maybe getting a bigger tree, so you're just looking at the trunk and not the foliage that hangs down. Uh, review the new guardrail code requirement that is coming. Roof deck material, confirm that, that it drains, I think that was Jenna's comment. That it no, it was the glare. The glare, yeah. okay. The glare of that roof deck. Uh, vehicle circulation was definitely a sticky point. Vehicles can't turn across that center line. Um, parking spaces, review that. Uh, they do meet the requirement, but with the overhang in the front there, do they infringe on that sidewalk? Yeah. I think that was your comment, there, Jenna. Or, no, okay. Review the parking circulation in the back and the stall sides. Uh, ramp at fronts and Possibly a landing might be required, and I know if Sarah was here, she would try to stick you to 5%, not 8%. It's actually a landing area. Is there? It's a landing, yeah, but yeah. we can okay. work around this. More than well. 30, though. Yeah. yeah. More than 30 feet, right? Maybe. It's, Maybe. It's 64 yeah. feet wide now. Um, okay. We are proposing a landing. All right, so the comments to review yeah. the ramp. Yeah, and thanks. Sarah would really want you to stick to 5%. <laughs> Uh, material, there was some debate on Cortan or the material that's presented here. There were some that loved this. It's very expensive, but I think overall we liked the material. Uh, move the fire hydrant 0.6 meters to hit that 45. Check your FCL. Um, 
your LA standard, Canadian standard, not BC standard. Um, review your drainage issues, particularly along that south property line and how that rain detail works. Consider larger doors, larger elevator. That's a s sticky point with tenants moving in and out. Um, a lot of the businesses along this corridor have very successful garage door opening. It spills out into the sidewalk, which is nice. Um, consider the impacts of a larger truck and larger truck loading coming in and out. We might, it does look like it can work, but just consider that, how that affects your site plan. Um, exit exposure on fire. Uh, that sidewalk may need to be offset by 10 feet. And you might consider uh, loading by lay-by, not as you have it here, so lay-by through this dry aisle, I guess. And add softener, softening to the front uh, sidewalk area and a rocks a potential different material along that frontage. Anything on this? I think we got that. Move the hydrant uh, and consider the location of the bus stop that it doesn't impede the sight line. All good? Richard, I don't know if I would uh, support looking at a rock stack wall on there. It might be rather rural or in comparison to the building. Okay. But, uh, so, I don't know, just okay. re review the material? Right, <laughs> review the material. Just okay. felt very long and, um, okay. So, we have a motion for B. Mm -hmm. Let's make a vote for B. And opposed? Unanimously, B. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Carried. And that's it, I guess. That's it. Uh, we do have. Thanks for the presentation. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else? We have no council member this time around. And any other roundtable discussions? I just have one. Um, yeah. Everyone works really hard on these drawings, but it's really hard to see them when all the lights are on. And I, I would like to just see. I mean, these lights kind of go off and on and off and on, and it's really hard to see sight plans. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if there's an opportunity to just keep the two off, so that at right. all times we can look up and read. And is, as we all know, it's really hard to see. I find it in. I don't know if people thought so or not, but... Yeah. We can approach that with our um, audiovisual yeah. team. Um, <laughs> they struggle with the ability to, you know, capture yeah. everybody here, yeah. so that's why they need all the light. It's a balance of the two, but, for sure. uh, Yeah, we can, we can approach them. Yeah, just see what's feasible, because they do go off at times, and then, but then we're still in the drawings, and it's just really hard to read, and just something to discuss, for sure. I, I, Thank you. I used the audiovisual the other night just because I was asked to make comments on last last month's meeting, <coughs> and actually it was I thought it was really effective. It seemed that uh, they actually switched to the computer because it was really clean, crisp, and you could just hear the voices around the table, which really don't need to see us. Yeah, it's more important that mm -hmm. the verbal is picked up and and the graphics are picked up. So maybe that's possible if they can just. Um, when they're doing visual, they, they can go straight to the computer and grab that image, and then we can see the image better ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Good. Any okay, last? Okay. Yep. more. Um, December 14th or 15th? Are we, are we changing the date from the third Thursday? Uh, no, I, I hope we are, as I've got something coming up. Mm -hmm. The agenda coordinator will confirm yeah. that. Yeah. But maybe for everyone just to send that out beforehand, earlier than yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. yeah. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. Right. Motion to terminate the meeting. John, seconded and crossing. Thanks.